I work with developers who build apps on Firebase. And as their apps grow, they often add Google Cloud components to their app. And I've done the same myself. Uh, the first few versions run on Firebase alone. And over time, I tend to add Google Cloud features. OK, so let's have a look at what developers might need as their Firebase app grows. I'm Martin, and I'm a developer advocate. I've had various jobs within Google over the last 17 years, but now I help developers build great apps on Google Cloud. And I'm Puff, or Frank, and I'm a Firebase engineer. I've been using Firebase since the first beta versions in 2012, and I help developers build amazing apps with Firebase. And while we have different titles, Firebase and Google Cloud are two sides of the same coin, right? Yes. Any Firebase project is just a Google Cloud project with some extra annotations. So uh, if you have a Firebase project today, you already have a Google Cloud project. See, here we have the Firebase console, where you manage all of your Firebase projects. And you can see that I have a project. Now let's open the Google Cloud console and look. There's the same project. These are really just two views on the same data. So it makes sense that developers start using Firebase and then add components for Google Cloud, or the other way around. What Google Cloud features do you see Firebase developers using the most, Puff? I often see Firebase developers using these three Google Cloud features. More control of server-side code. They want them to do reports on Firestore data. And they want to handle asynchronous communication with other systems. All right, let's start with the first one on your list. Developers need more control of server-side code. Tell me more. Cloud Functions for Firebase is a great way of running server-side code for your web or mobile apps. We really made it as easy as possible to add server-side code to your Firebase app. But uh, as your application grows, you end up with many cloud functions. Once you reach like a dozen or more, you may want to manage them as a single service instead of as individual functions. With Cloud Run, you can do exactly that. After I switched to Cloud Run, I noticed that there were fewer slow cold starts. After the first request to my Cloud Run service, there were no more cold starts for any of the endpoints within that service. Yeah, that's a good point. And also, sometimes developers need to write backend code in languages other than JavaScript or Python. Perhaps they work with a backend team who prefer another language like C Sharp, Java, or Go. Then they can run their own backend in Cloud Run. Right. Cloud Run supports any language that you can build a container for. That means pretty much any current programming language. Exactly. And with container based development, you get better control of your dependencies because they're on the container that you control. Yep. Uh, containers help address the problem of it runs on my machine. Another reason is that you can include binary libraries in a container. So you might need a specific binary library for things like image manipulation, data compression, or PDF creation. Right. Uh, my, one of my applications uh, draws dynamic text and graphics and returns an image to the client. It was very useful to load fonts into my Cloud Run container. Oh, yeah, I get that. You just add the dependencies into your Docker file, and Google will make them available to your code in Cloud Run. All right. That was number one. The second item on your list was reports on Firestore data. Many developers use Firestore to store their app's data on the server. Now, Firestore is a NoSQL database, which means that it's great for auto-scaling to your, no your number of users. And it's easy to get started with. You can look up individual records quickly. I hear a but coming. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Firestore is not great for ad hoc querying. So it's not the best solution for calculating your typical report data, which may require reading thousands of records. For example, let's say that you have 100,000 sales records in Firestore, each in a separate document, and that you want to see how many sales you had in each region for each week in the past quarter. And that would require reading 100,000 documents uh, one at a time? Right. And document databases are just not optimized for that. And you'd be paying for each of those document reads. But there are databases that are very good at ad hoc queries, like these. My personal favorite is BigQuery. And how do you now get your Firestore documents into BigQuery? Well, there are two easy ways. You can batch export, or you can do streaming. So I think I've used the batch approach. Every night, my application runs gcloud firestore export uh, to export the data from Firestore, followed by a BQ load to load the data into BigQuery. Uh, that's what you mean, right? Yeah, that's it. Running a nightly batch job is easy. But it means that your BigQuery reports may be up to 24 hours behind the current state of the data in Firestore. With streaming, your BigQuery data will always be up to date. There's a Firebase extension that sets this up for you. 
Yeah, I've read about that extension. Uh, I like how I don't have to write any code. I just have to enable it in my project. But if I understand correctly, it tracks changes in Firestore. Uh, will it backfill existing Firestore data? Yeah, it includes a script that will backfill existing Firestore data. So you turn on streaming, then you run the import script to backfill the data, and you're all set. OK. So once my data is in BigQuery, I can run reports on it? Yeah. Some developers prefer to run SQL queries in the BigQuery user interface. Others prefer to build dashboards in Looker Studio. Looker Studio supports 40 chart types. So even I can use it to create beautiful visualizations on data from Firestore. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's talk about the third item on your list, async communication with other systems. Tell me more, Puff. Many Firebase applications are part of larger systems that are not built in Firebase. For example, an e-commerce web app may send orders to an existing legacy backend system. Well, the Firebase app can just make an HTTP call to that legacy backend, right? Yeah, it can. Yeah, for sure. But there are a few potential problems with that. The Firebase application would need to know the address of the backend system. And if that ever changes, you would need to update the Firebase app. If there are multiple recipients, the app would need to know about that too. And if the HTTP request fails, the Firebase application would need to retry it later. All of that is possible, but it adds extra code, right? And you really don't want to have that code in your client app. Ah, oh, and that's where the asynchronous communication comes in. Exactly. There's a product in Google Cloud called PubSub that handles all of this. So we implement a cloud function that you call from your client-side application, and then that cloud function queues a request for the other system in PubSub. Right. I've written applications that send PubSub messages before. Uh, it was just a few lines of code. Exactly. That's the idea. Many customers use PubSub as a robust message bus between their various cloud applications. And Firebase applications can be part of that architecture. Because remember, every Firebase project is a Google Cloud project too. All right. Now, who can receive these PubSub messages? Oh, that can be subscribers on Google Cloud or anywhere on the internet. They can receive and act on all of the messages. So you can choose if the messages should be pushed to the subscriber or if subscribers should pull the messages. And you can even let one message go to multiple subscribers. All right. We've covered a lot of ground here, Puff. So let's recap. First off, every Firebase project is a Google Cloud project. Firebase and Google Cloud are just two sides of the same coin. They work well together. And you work with the developers who host their apps on Firebase. Which Google Cloud features do you see them use most often? They want more control of their server-side code, plus the advantages of container-based development. They get that with Cloud Run. Then they want reports and dashboards based on their Firestore data. They get that with BigQuery and Looker Studio. And they may want asynchronous communication with other systems, in Google Cloud or anywhere on the internet. And they would get that with PubSub. Great recap. Yeah, that was excellent, Martin. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me, Puff. This was fun. And thank you for watching. Now, if you have any questions about today's topics, post them in the comments below. And if you want to learn more about Firebase, subscribe to the channel and give us a like while you're at it. See you next time. Thank <music> you.